Good morning everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. This is one of the unpruned plants and what happens is it, it grows up and it splits into two. I've actually got a side shoot growing here so we'll disregard that for a minute but your plant will split into two stems and then that stem will also then split into two and it will split into two so it means it pyramids in reverse. Eventually you'll have a very thin stem and a lot of plants higher up and this is the idea of pruning the peppers is to keep all that lower to the ground and therefore much sturdier. So this is how we used to grow it in this country. We let the two stems grow and then we actually cut one out. Let the two stems carry on growing up till they split and then you cut another one out. So eventually you've got a kind of a zigzag cordon. And that's generally how we grow peppers in this country. You can see I've got flowers on there, so fruit are going to follow soon. Um, so, you know, I'm reasonably happy with that plant and that's how I've always grown them. With the prune plant, this growing, splitting, dividing, whatever you want to call it, happens a lot lower down because you've taken the tops off. You encourage the side shoots to grow, so the first one is a couple of inches from the bottom and then at regular intervals up there. And you've still got this branching out and the plant will still pyramid and reverse up but it'll be much lower down this is a good six or eight inches than the lower than the last plant we looked at much lower to the ground and the fruiting is delayed that's what's most important i was asked a question the other day on on the um, on, on the channel about how my plants were fruiting um, the unpruned plants they were mostly in flower the pruned plants They've got little buds on them, but they're not in flower yet. You see, there's little buds just coming along on there. So that they'll be they'll be fruiting in a couple of weeks. But I do think that if I'd have done this much earlier in the season, before I'd even put them in the ground, the plants would be smaller, stronger and better for it. So next year, I'll try it again. I will leave some and grow them as, an, as I have done for years. And I will prune some like these these fellas much smaller much earlier on in the season just to see what a difference that makes i've got the space to do it so i'm more than happy to to do that pruning these front row plants which are on the left of frame now just means that the front and the back row of uh, peppers all get sunshine through the day as the sunshine arcs along left of left of the frame here now on the other side of the tunnel I've got more peppers planted and I haven't pruned any of these peppers on this side at all. And I've also got some aubergines, one, two and three. Now I have got some fruit on them, on these aubergines, little ones. But all in all, the plants themselves don't look that good. And I think that's more down to the soil uh, itself and than anything else really. Further up that same bed I've got this hot box configuration. The idea was I dug it out deep, built this box around the area, filled it with layers of horse manure, grass and compost and whatever else I could get my hands on uh, to heat the soil up to do a certain job, which it didn't get as hot as I wanted it, so I've just been left and abandoned for this year. But I am growing, again, peppers and aubergines. Now what a difference, night and day difference this is. No fruits on these aubergines as yet, but the plants overall look well, they're almost twice the size of the others. Uh, and I think that's more to do with the enriched soil that's here as opposed to any residual heat. There is some residual heat from the composting process that's still going on underneath this bed because it's a hot bed. And a good sort of six inches down is 25 degrees, whereas normal soil temperature at the minute is anywhere between 16 and 18 degrees. So it's still reasonably warm underneath. So it might be a contributory factor. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm actually putting it down to good, uh, good healthy, um, strong soil at the minute. 
With the protection around them, the sweet corn's done incredibly well. It's approaching five foot tall now and has male flowers on it and the cobs are starting to form. I took the lids off these boxes uh, nearly two weeks ago and I've got them in the big tunnel. We're going to have a look at them now because I'm using one for something else. Yeah, but very pleased with them. Just shows you a bit of extra protection. You can see how the wind's blo blowing these around today. Uh, they'll be knocking these plants over today. So, yeah, very happy. Okay, here in the big tunnel, we've got, uh, first of all, we've got the uh, 15 free tomato plants that I planted, planted out on video two days ago and all the little side shoots down there as well. They're looking a bit sorry for themselves, but they'll pick up, hopefully. The next bed along, I've got one of the lids on top of uh, one of the beds there and that lid came off where the sweet corn was, those little cloches outside, well little big cloches uh, and that's just getting the swarm boiled, warmed up, I put that on yesterday and I'm going to be sowing some um, dwarf French beans under there today. Uh, here we go, a nice close up of some plastic, <laughs> this is just the lid over the bed and you can see the condensation, you can see that warming the soil is working. I've got a soil thermometer in the next bed up and that's showing that in the root zone where I'll be sowing the seeds it's 15 degrees soil temperature and under this plastic it's currently 19 degrees so it's making that much of a difference on, on these colder overcast days. Hopefully in a day or two when the sun comes back I won't need this over it anymore. This next bed up is going to get covered today. I'll put the second lid on this one today and start warming up because I'm going to be sowing some biannual seeds tomorrow. This next bed shows the um, the brassicas I sowed a couple of weeks ago and on the extreme left next to wood you can see some seedlings coming up. They're the Romanescu cauliflower I sowed uh, three or four days ago I think it was now. This lot up here, uh, mostly dahlias at the front here, um, just waiting for some reasonable weather outside so I can get them in the ground. They'll be going in this week hopefully, they should have been two days ago but they'll go in this week. And behind there's some spur tomato plants, zinnias and a few lettuce also waiting to go out and get planted. Up here top right of the tunnel next to the water butts I've got some fig cuttings. Now they're almost uh, little trees there at the minute, they're doing very well. They're waiting for the uh, my new polytunnel to be put up outside, which I couldn't do for one reason or another out there this year. And there's some grape cuttings there, they're growing away really nice. So, And this shows the other side of the polytunnel, all my tomato plants in there. The, um, at the base there are the tajits or marigolds that help deter white fly and above it over the top of the framework are the grapevine and this is just behind the tomato plants it's the bench with all the plants on ready and waiting to go out or be planted There's still quite a few in there some rubbish but there we go so it's a horrible day outside it's almost like back end going September into October uh, blowy, wet, miserable, horrible, so I thought I'd do a, a little video inside showing you the two polytunnels, where I'm up to with stuff, what needs to be done next and what I'll be doing next. So, Anyway, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and select all, that way next time I post some content you won't miss it. Uh, I think that's about it for today, all that remains for me to say is just stay safe everyone, Stay two metres away from everyone. Don't do this one metre rubbish. Stay out of the pubs. Drink at home. <laughs> anyway, I wish you all the best of luck. See you soon. Ta-ra now.